Good day, this is Ann Windsor, and welcome to Selected Readings from John G. Lake. These are taken from the book John G. Lake, His Life, His Sermons, His Boldness, Faith, published by Copeland Publications. I have previously read all of this material in this book, the sermons, and these excerpts were included. You can find the sermons under a playlist, John G. Lake playlist, here on my YouTube channel. The first of the year, the Lord encouraged me to go back through this book and pick out short readings, things about Dr. Lake, things said by Dr. Lake, prophecies, things given in tongues and interpretation. So enjoy today's reading. Today I will be beginning on page 351 if you happen to have a copy of this book. This is a statement by John G. Lake from 1920. First, Commit your body and soul and spirit in entire hundredfold consecration to God forever. Do not, do not be satisfied with sins forgiven. Press on. Press in. Let God have you and fill you until consciously He dwells, lives, abides in every cell of your blood, of your bone, and your brain, until your soul, your psyche or mind, indwelt by him, thinks his thoughts, speaks his word, until your spirit assimilates God, and God's spirit assimilates you. Until your humanity and his divinity are merged into his eternal deity. Thus, body, soul, and spirit are God's forever and ever. That is the power of divine healing. Luke 10, 19 Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Whew! That is full of revelation. That is meat for men. Let's read it again. Dr. Lake, first commit your body and soul and spirit in entire hundredfold consecration to God forever. Do not be satisfied with sins forgiven. Press on. Press in. Let God have you and fill you until consciously he dwells, lives, abides in every cell of your blood, of your bone, and your brain. Until your soul, your mind, indwelt by him, thinks his thoughts, speaks his word, until your spirit assimilates God, and God's spirit assimilates you. Until your humanity and his divinity are merged into his eternal deity. Thus, body, soul, and spirit. Thus, body, soul, and spirit are God's forever and forever. Amen. That is the power 
of divine healing. Luke 10, 19, Behold, Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Dr. Lake, February the 18th, 1917. All that Jesus was to the world, he purposed that the church of Christ should be. First, he blessed the world through his own physical personality. Second, he established a physical body composed of many members, joined in one by the Spirit of God. When he established the second body, capital B, the church, he never intended that it should be of lesser authority or of lesser power than the first, his own coming in a physical body. It was his real purpose that the second body, the church, should exercise and fully accomplish all that the first had done. All that Jesus was to the world, he purposed that the church of Christ should be. First, he blessed the world through his own physical personality or physical existence in the world. Second, then, he established a physical body composed of many believers, joined as one by the Spirit of God. When he established the second body, capital B, the church, he never intended that it should be of lesser authority or of lesser power than the first physical body, his own. It was his real purpose that the second body, the church, should exercise and fully accomplish all that the first had done. So he's saying he came physically himself the first time, then he established a physical body in the church, and that the church should exercise and fully, fully accomplish all that he accomplished when he was here physically. That the church, while we are here physically, should accomplish all that he accomplished when he was here physically. I just thought I'd add that commentary because even to myself, it wasn't completely clear in the statement that he was making here. Now this next one, is a Tongues and Interpretation by Dr. John G. Lake, Reverend John G. Lake, Spokane, Washington, March 6th, 1916. It's entitled Holiness Unto the Lord, and it is quite lengthy. Many times when Dr. Lake would wake up in the night or he'd be praying in tongues during his prayer time, he would get these more lengthy interpretations. It doesn't say here whether this was a public tongues and interpretation or if it was during his own private prayer time with the Lord. But as I said, it's quite lengthy for a tongues and interpretation. So I would assume that it came out of his private devotional time. Dr. Lake in tongues with the interpretation. Holiness is the character of God, the very substance of his being and essence of his nature is purity. The very substance of his being and essence of his nature is purity. The purpose of God in the salvation of mankind is to produce in man a kindred holiness, a radiant purity like unto that of God himself. If God were unable to produce in man such a purity, then his purpose in man would be a failure, and the object 
of the sacrifice of Jesus would be a miscarriage instead of a triumph. The triumph of Jesus Christ was attained through his willingness to be led by the Spirit of God. The triumph of the Christian can be attained only in a similar manner. Even though God has baptized a soul in the, with the Holy Spirit, there yet remains, as with Jesus, the present necessity of walking in humility and permitting the Spirit of God to be his absolute guide. Mm. The unveiling of consciousness of the desire of the flesh, of the sensuality of the nature and the thought of man, the revelation of adverse tendencies is part of God's purpose and is necessary for growth in God. The unveiling of consciousness, or what you think about, you're aware of all the time. The unveiling of any desires of the flesh you may have. The unveiling of any sensuality still in you. The unveiling of your thoughts. The unveiling of... Uh, Adverse tendencies is part of God's purpose and is necessary for growth in God. How can the nature of man be changed except that the nature first be revealed? So there arises in the heart the desire and prayer for the Spirit of God to eject, crucify, and destroy every tendency of opposition to the Holy Spirit. Mm. There arises in the heart the desire and prayer for the Spirit of God to eject, crucify, and destroy every tendency of opposition to the Holy Spirit. Think not that thou shalt attain the highest in God until with thine own soul a heavenly longing to be like him who gave his life for us until this heavenly longing possesses thine heart. Think not to come within the court of God with stain upon thy garments. Think not that heaven can smile upon a nature fouled through evil contact. Think not that Christ can dwell in temples seared by flames of hate. No, the heart of man must first be purged by holy fire and washed from every stain by the cleansing blood. Know ye that he whose nature is akin to God's must ever feel the purging power of Christ within. Know ye that he whose nature is akin to God's must ever feel the purging power of Christ within. He who would understand the ways of God must trust the Spirit's power to guide and keep. He who would tread the paths where angels tread himself must realize seraphic purity. Such is the nature of God. Such is the working of the Spirit's power. Such the attainment of him who overcomes. In him the joy and power of God shall be. Through him the healing streams of life shall flow. To him heaven's gates are opened wide, and in him the kingdom is revealed. Oh, Fear not to place thy hand within the nail-pierced palm. Fear not to trust his guidance. The way he trod is marked by bleeding feet and wet with many tears. He leadeth thee aright, and heaven's splendor soon shall open to thy spirit. And thou shalt know that all triumphant souls, those that have overcome indeed, have found their entrance by this path into the realms of light. Let's read that again. Sometimes it takes two readings before it really the mind begins to grasp what is being said. Holiness is the character of God, the very substance of his being and essence of his nature, his purity the very substance of his being and essence of his nature is purity. The purpose of God 
in the salvation of mankind is to produce in man a kindred or like holiness, a radiant purity, a radiant purity, like unto that of God himself. If God were unable to produce in man such a purity, then his purpose in man would be a failure. And the object of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ would be a miscarriage instead of a triumph. The triumph of Jesus Christ was attained through his willingness to be led by the Spirit of God. The triumph of Jesus Christ was attained through his willingness to be led by the Spirit of God. Likewise, the triumph of the Christian can be attained only in a similar manner. Even though God has baptized a soul with the Holy Spirit, there yet remains, as with Jesus, the present necessity of walking in humility and permitting the Spirit of God to be your absolute guide. Even though God, I'll make this personal, even though God has baptized your, your soul with the Holy Spirit, there yet remains for you, as with Jesus, the present necessity of your walking in humility and your permitting the Spirit of God to be your absolute guide. Going on. The unveiling of consciousness, your conscious awareness, what you think about, the, the spirit about you, attitude, atmosphere about you, the unveiling of consciousness, of the desires of your flesh, of any sensuality still left in you, in your soul, in your body, and your thoughts, and the revelation of adverse tendencies that may be in you. All this work is a part of God's purpose and necessary for your growth in God. How can you be changed except all these things first be revealed? Oh, so there arises in the true heart, the born-again heart, the desire and prayer for the Spirit of God to eject, crucify, and destroy every tendency of opposition that lies in the soul and the body, to destroy every tendency of opposition to the Holy Spirit. Think not that you shall attain the highest in God until your own soul, mind, will, and emotions have a heavenly longing to be like him who gave his life for you until this longing possesses your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Attain the highest in God when this longing possesses your heart. Oh, think not to come within the court of God with a stain upon your garments. Think not that heaven can smile upon a nature fouled through evil contact. Think not that Christ can dwell in temples seared by flames of hate. No, the heart of man must first be purged by holy fire and washed from every stain that includes your soul and your body. By cleansing blood, know ye that he whose nature is akin to God's must ever feel the purging power of Christ within. Oh, as we are born again and press in that longing, that sanctifying power is constantly at work within us to purge us of things that keep us from being in the image of God's dear Son. Dr. Lake, he who would understand the ways of God must trust the Spirit's power to guide and keep. 
Oh, this goes back to what he said over here. The triumph of Jesus Christ was attained through his willingness to be led by the Spirit of God. The triumph of the Christian can be attained only in a similar manner. Even though God has baptized a soul with the Holy Spirit, there yet remains, as with Jesus, the present necessity of walking in humility and permitting the Spirit of God to be his absolute guide. He who would understand the ways of God, the ways of God, must trust the Spirit's power to guide and keep. He who would tread or walk the paths where angels walk, he himself must realize angelic purity. Oh, such is the nature of God. What is the title of this? Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness is the character of God, the very substance of his being and essence of his nature is purity. And the purpose of God in the salvation of mankind is to produce in man a kindred holiness, a radiant purity like that of God himself. Oh, yes. He who would tread the paths where angels tread himself must realize angelic purity. Such is the nature of God. Such is the working of the Spirit's power. Such the attainment of him who overcomes. Hmm. This holiness, soul, spirit, soul, and body is the attainment of him who overcomes these sensualities, these adverse tendencies, these things that oppose the Holy Spirit. Oh, in him the joy and power of God shall be. Through him the healing streams of life shall flow. To him heaven's gates are opened wide. In him the kingdom is revealed. <laughs> oh, in him, through him, to him. Fear not to place thy hand within the nail-pierced palm. Fear not to trust his guidance. The way he trod is marked by bleeding feet and wet with many tears. Oh, he leads thee aright. And heaven's splendor soon shall open to thy spirit. And thou shalt know that all triumphant souls, those that have overcome indeed, have found their entrance by this path into the realms of light. My, my, my. I don't think any more needs to be said or read at this point. I think what has been read and said needs to be fed, fed into your inner man, into your soul, meat for your spirit, training for your soul, all oh, sanctifying of your body. See the goal. Oh, this not this is not Dr. Lake speaking here. This is a tongues and interpretation. This is the Holy Spirit giving us a lesson on the holiness of God and how to walk in the realms of light. Oh, that our spirits are crying out to do. And that the the soul with its attachment to this world hinders us from achieving. Oh, but here we have the answer. 
if we will be led by the Spirit just as Jesus and obey the Holy Spirit, he will see that we're cleansed from all the things that hinder and that we find that entrance into the realms of light. God has more for us than we, our eye has seen or our ear has even heard. All the great preachers that have been, there are still yet treasures to be brought forth. Oh, old and new as Jesus declared. Father, I just don't hardly know what to pray or say. My breath is taken away today. Lord, work mightily. Help those that listen, not just to say, well, I got that done now. Help them, Father. Help them to drink in these exhortations from Dr. Lake. Oh, we look at his life and desire to live and walk and to demonstrate the power of God as he did. Father, and in these exhortations, he is showing us how he achieved what he did. Help us not to take them lightly, Father. Help us to be good ground and let this seed really sink in. Sink in, Lord, by repetition and note-taking. Thoughts to ponder, Father, from these great words given by your Spirit, inspired by your Spirit. And, Father, I cast this seed out upon the hearts of of those that shall hear it. Father, I pray that they will be good stewards of it. In Jesus' name, amen.